Hey, what's up guys? Dark Ricker here and in today's video we are gonna play Jace on the new patch. He received a pretty significant buff on the first ability both for the melee form and for the range form. The scaling with 10% more AD and his poking does so much damage. Um, there are three item builds that you can go for Jace. This is gonna be the Baron Lane Jace build where you have to match against another split pusher like a Jax in this example. And I think it's mandatory if you're playing against a champion like Jax who is building Heartbreaker because otherwise um, you will always get pushed in and you can push back and it's giving you still a decent amount of resistance in your um, cannon form you still get the full resistance if I'm not wrong and in your range form you get half the resistance so definitely a nerf. Um, but still stats wise 55 attack damage is a lot and the moment you have it you are super strong and it makes it uh, much harder for like split pushers or other bruisers to kill you. You can also just don't get this item and go for black cleaver and set first item. Um, the item got slightly nerfed but it's still amazing stat wise. Um, giving you tons of HP, uh, giving you a lot of HP, attack damage, ability haste, and armor shred. Um, this would be like the other option where you're skipping Heartbreaker if you're against a champion where you don't need the Heartbreaker. But I actually pretty like the, I still like the Heartbreaker even though it got nerfed. Might not be the best, but it is still pretty damn good. Wait, what was the other one? Was this? And then Edge of Night. Probably you can also go Guardian Angel. <clears throat> and the other option was, um, like I'm just talking about the core items so what I would change right now. The other one would be where you're getting mana immune. If you're gonna, if you guys want to, you can also go for Humus Ghostblade second. Uh, but that build is very squishy and I will probably go for it in the mid lane when you're uh, building like a more poking, uh, poking build. So you could go Mana Mune into Black Cleaver in the Baron lane if you guys want more damage, more scaling because Mana Mune gives you so much AD and so much better late game scaling poking damage in comparison to the other build. Or you go for the uh, pool lethality where you're skipping Black Cleaver and getting Humus Ghostblade second. But you are very very squishy with this build and I wouldn't recommend it for the Baron lane necessary. I think going Black, Black Cleaver or Heartbreaker first item is probably the uh, the best choice. <clears throat> so I would probably go for this build and then Sarita for the additional armor penetration percentage for the poking. Edge of Night is a pretty good item for the uh, for the spell sheet for even more lethality. You can also go for Death Dance for the physical damage reduction or Guardian Angel for the revive. Um, for the Runes Conqueror that's the must have. Um, you can go for Brutal for the early game harassment, uh, your auto attacks, you can uh, poke the people down, you can go for Triumph for extra sustain and team fights. you can go for Champion as well um, for more damage against Champions, uh, for the runes Bone Plating is pretty good for Champions that want to engage on you like a Riven or Renekton that have pretty good burst damage, you can go Second Wind uh, which is pretty good. For the extra sustain in harder matchups, but since you're a ranged champion, you're not getting as much as melee. Uh, you can go for Hunter's Titan for HP tenacity, obviously. Um, for this bottom row, I would go Mana Flow Band for some more mana since we are not running Mana Mune. And with this, this is pretty much enough for you to not run out of mana, spamming your um, first and third, uh, third ability poke combo or you can go for Demolish for the turret destruction which is pretty good um, on Jace. With the second ability you get tons of attack speed and you can uh, kill turrets super quickly with a Heartbreaker as well. And for the spells just Ignite Flash for the kill pressure or Barrier Flash if you guys want more uh, sustain. But yeah, let's hop right into the gameplay. Okay guys, let's go full Grandmaster Lobby. Let me change the... Um... Let's it's always funny how this looks kind of stuck and I've readjusted. Okay. I guess this looks good now. We're actually playing a, against, I would say, pretty hard matchups. Because we are playing against Jax, and that man is scaling like a truck. And in my opinion, Jax probably only has like a handful of harder matchups. 
And otherwise, he's just outscaling super hard. Like, I would say Fiora is probably the hardest early game matchup for him. Um, just because of the insane uh, poke she does. Pike is going for a cheesy play. Let's see. He misses the first ability. <laughs> I don't know what he was trying there. Like, that was so true. That was so true. I, 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 I don't know. <clears throat> but anyways... So, my man is going in, we have bone plating, so I'm just trying to trade aggressively because I think I have the advantage with the bone plating. One thing in this matchup is definitely, every time he jumps on you and he uses the third ability, you wanna, um, you wanna kick him away with your third ability with the hammer, you're throwing him away and once it runs out you jump onto him because then he will take a lot of damage and he also gets slowed down. So this is how you wanna trade every time, because every single time uh, Jax has his jump and the third ability he will try to jump onto you trying to uh, harass you. So in the laning phase obviously you wanna harass him every time he, every time he comes or wants to go for a last hit you wanna zone him away or you wanna contest it and make his life as hard as possible okay my man oh, what you're trying i haven't played jace in a while so don't mind me for my laning phase because obviously um we're kind of rusty on the i actually had a really nice gameplay in the mid lane but it was too stompy like i had 8-0 gameplay in the mid lane super super stompy i was like mm. I don't think pe people are gonna see. You're only up lots thumbs. So this gameplay is gonna be super, super close actually. So I think you guys will enjoy it because it goes uh, pretty much into the, into the late game. Okay, nice Q, good poke, insane poke. Okay, kick him away. And now I'm trying to trade against this guy. He has the ultimate though. And surprisingly, this was very, very close because he had the level 5 advantage where he gets resistance from uh, the, the ultimate. Okay, try to find him right here. And now I'm gonna do a mistake. Um, okay. Am I still staying? I'm still staying. <laughs> Dude. The thing is, I need, to, I need to shock the wave to be fair because otherwise he will freeze it before the truth. Like, my wave is fucked if I don't do this. And I didn't have vision. Because now you guys will see that Shivana is coming and I just get collection. Yeah, that's that's a, that's the thing though. If I, if I just back after the cannon, my wave is completely fucked afterwards. So I kind of had to do it. Yeah, mm, I mean obviously giving a kill is not good. That was my... My bad overstaying. I'm just thinking. Should have just backed immediately after the cannon, but then Jax is just gonna freeze the wave right before the turret, and it's a huge wave. And now the wave is in a pretty good spot, to be fair. Like, it's in a neutral position again. Oh, I don't know why he went in. Why do you went in like this, Pike? Oh my god, you're running me. He's running me down. He's just diving in. He's just jumping with the third ability into the uh, Chemicats himself. Ay, ay, ay. Not the greatest start, but we might be able to get some plates here. If I demolish, we'd probably get the threat here. Ah, I think we still are getting it. So... What do you learn so far? Wave management is important, but giving kills is maybe something you need to consider. Like, I, I mean, I obviously knew it was greedy, but I'm just thinking about... Uh, if I don't do it, I'm, I'm my wave is fucked and I'm losing more gold. Like, yes, I donated 300 gold to Shiva. I don't know. You can't even... Ah, nah, what do you guys think? What I should have done? Just reset immediately, I guess. And pray, uh, pray Jax is stupid and he's gonna de-push immediately, I guess. But yeah, don't overstay. Don't overstay. 
when uh, you're low life and just go back. See, that's what you want to do trading wise, by the way. He jumps in, you just kick him away, and now I'm just going back in. He's so tanky because of Heartbreaker, by the way, it's crazy. Get the solo kill on the Jax. So, when he, when he tries to jump on you, you kick him away with the hammer, or you uh, smash him away with the hammer, and then afterwards, the moment it runs out, you jump onto him, because the hammer does tons of damage, and you slow him down afterwards as well. So, he used his jump already, and he used his third ability, so if you jump on him, you can just kite back, because then uh, he, he will take a lot of slow, or slowing effect from the first ability, from the hammer. And right now, instead of joining, I'm just taking the turret right here. Because getting the mid turret is actually pretty, pretty fucking good. Okay, get it. Nice. That's a lot of gold. Okay, no one is defending Potland though. It's Batman. But I think it's fine to trade this. Uh, because getting the mid turret opens up the map. And I think it's more important than the bot turret. But I mean, obviously, it would have been pretty nice to still um, hold it. I think they're gonna get the bot, so I'm just gonna push mid lane or maybe rotate to the top side right here. Okay, Shivana, hello. Just gonna push out this wave and then try to rotate and see if we can pick people off. Yeah, gonna push this wave and then I'm gonna go for the scuffle. Like you always wanna maximize the amount of gold you can farm on the map. So push the wave, try to get some um, camps, maybe the crux, maybe the uh, uh, the scuttle, and then try to rotate and see if you can make some plays happen. And get armor boots because of the jacks. Mercs are not that bad because they have Rakan and Aurelion Soul, but overall I think Tavai are just gonna be more important or they say still cap. Kick him away. Oh I still get stunned on this better. I'm actually surprised that this guy still dies by the way. My, my Pike is trying to help, but he's just griefing the Jax to be fair. He's, uh, he's more hurting us than helping right now. Like both times he tried to gank or help, he just ends up dying as well. Okay, kinda low. Maybe I can slow. Oh, I missed that one. Yikes. Get the double kill. We might be able to push mid lane here. Did that Shivana just run them down? Okay, right now what I want to do is push the top lane, lane out and then maybe see if I can uh, get the top turret. Okay. Okay, someone needs to hold mid lane. Let's see if I can take it. It's kind of risky because I can see on the minimap right now that Vayne and Rakan are moving up. Um, the Heartbreaker minions are getting securing it, so that's fine. Okay, Mountain Dragon is gonna spawn soon. I'm pretty strong right now. I have 10k. I'm actually gonna, gonna go for Serilda here. Um, because it gives me so much more damage than Edge of Night. 
Especially against tanky champions like Shivana and Rakan, it's gonna be pretty beneficial. Like, that's so much damage more. I need to de push topside because Jax pushed it in. And then we can group for the dragon. Okay, they're chasing mid lane. They're chasing mid lane right now. I don't like that. Right before dragon, they're chasing mid lane. And Rakan dies now. At least in reset, realized. Okay, Jax flanks from behind. And now Shivana's here as well. And E flash for Jax. And we get to the next one. Um, yeah, one, one person does a mistake, and everyone else is just uh, ending up inting for it. I tried to help there, and I got a collapse from behind by Shivana and Jax. So, yeah, that's pretty bad because now they will get mountain and mountain gives so much resistance. And resistance on champions like Jax and Shivana is pretty damn bad. Because Jax's ultimate already gives him resistance, and then with the mountain, he will be super, super tanky. And same for the Shivana. This is very bad, uh, trying to make a play happen alone right before the dragon. So you you make one mistake and you cost the whole team a uh, big objective. So just bunch up, group up if you're ahead. Don't go for some stupid plays right before the big objective. That's how you throw games, by the way. And also, the, uh, the, our team call the shit, by the way. I just wanna I just wanna mention our team from this fucking shit in comparison. Like they have super strong scaling champions and they have frontline while we have zero frontline. Like they have Rakan, Aurelion, super good in team fights, and the super late game scaling Jackson Vayne as well. Plus Shivana is also scaling, so the longer the game goes the better for the opponents to be fair. I'm not sure if I can beat this guy, by the way, so I don't wanna... Oh, I missed the Q here, that was not good. Yeah, I thought they missed the Q with the fun uh, way easier. I'm still stronger than him 1 vs 1, but it's getting, it's getting to a point where it's getting super, super hard for me to beat him uh, 1 vs 1, because obviously he is... It's a Jax. Jax is one of the best scaling champions and the longer the game goes, the harder it is for me to hold him. Especially since he's going uh, Trinity Hardworker, going for super strong scaling uh, split push build. This is for example a game where you need to go Hardworker because otherwise you will never match him and you can't do shit against him anymore. So I need the Hardworker for the resistance and I need the Hardworker to match the cannon or the... The Heartbreaker Wave against Heartbreaker Wave. And I think a lot of times you will have those matchups where you're against a Camille, um, against a Renekton maybe, or what else is pretty strong right now? Camille, Renekton, Fiora. Okay, Fiora not necessary because Jace counters Fiora actually pretty good, but Jax, Camille, probably very, very annoying matchups. And now we're doing a mistake, by the way. The mistake is, guess what? We are chasing the Jax 3 men while we have zero vision on Baron. And what will they do? They will just get the fucking Baron. I'm like, okay. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> hey, maybe. Maybe. Oh, we, are, we, are, we chase too far here. <clears throat> Yeah, you can't do that. The only way to do that if the jungler has teleport, or if, if it's just the mid laner coming. Now, actually, the Seraphine should be near Baron to poke them down, but we needed vision on the Baron. <coughs> it was very smart for them to just rush it because they knew three people were topside chasing, and we had zero vision on the Baron. Macro mistake does, for sure.
But the thing is, we kind of need to pick up people. Um, because teamfight wise, 5 vs 5, we're weaker. They just have the better teamfight. So, we are kind of forced to make those plays happen. To get the man advantage, to then force a teamfight, 5 vs 4. Because the straight 5 vs 5, we're not winning. Because they have Shivana, they have Vayne, they have Rakan, they have uh, Aurelian Soul, especially in the 5 vs 5, in the pit or something. Aurelian Soul is very broken in team fights. Okay, I jumped a little bit early. <coughs> I think he's gonna secure it. Oh, he actually gets it with the portable. Interesting. Okay, right now I see they're fighting. I'm I'm just praying they can stall it so I can keep pushing here. When you can switch forms, do it because you get additional damage as well by switching forms. Ay ay ay. Mm. I tried to catch the vein the first, and then I was like, mm. if I didn't attempt, if I didn't attempt to go for the vein, maybe I could have nail, could have taken the tier three turret. That's a maybe. Hey, oh, maybe if I just have the knowledge, I also take the turret. That's. That's one of those moments where I'm thinking, okay, do you need the Molish or do you want to go for the Mana Flow? I mean, Mana Flow is pretty good for the poking and you don't need blue buff. But having the Molish for uh, Turret Siege is pretty important because within one second you pretty much can take the turret. With Hallbreaker, the Molish, pew pew pew, and you just get the turret. Trying to poke here. Hiding in the pit is really not that good, by the way, for us. I mean, the the exception is Seraphine's ultimate, but besides that, Aurelion, So, Shivana, Jax, they are pretty strong in pit fights because everyone's the, the bunch up and they can just hit their abilities. Like, if Jax jumps in and everyone is bunch up, he's just stunning multiple people for free. I'm resetting because I need to match against the Jacks that are pushing right now. Yeah, that's the point! That's the point right now. Right here where the game is starting to become very, very, very obnoxious. Because Jax is... Um, I don't know if I can win one or something against Jax anymore. And I always have to fucking hold this guy. Because he will always try to attempt to uh, split push. It's actually beatable. The thing is, oh, why is Saya back for wait? Let me check something. Why is Saya back for something? Is she is she low? No, she's not fucking low. She didn't get to rest. But the issue is, Pai came. Pai coming is okay. We, we see them. We see them going for Baron, by the way. And Saya is resetting. And what do they do now? They go for the fucking Baron again. But this time they are three people they could have stalled. They have Seraphine, but Tyre is not there. Vex is trying to steal it, doesn't get it. Ay ay ay. The question is, could have killed the Jax alone? Probably. Actually was... Actually was winnable, even without the Pike. But Pike, the moment they see Pike coming, they're like, okay, we're gonna rush it. And ev like, even if they rush it 4 versus 3, the others can stall it with Seraphine and Saya. They could have been able to stall it. So, them not being there immediately to protect or try to stall it out. Like, the first one was dumb because the jungler was also chasing. But this time, if Saya doesn't reset for no reason right before the Baron, why they, she sees them rushing Baron, then yes, it's a 1 vs 2 topside. But that's what I mean about split pushing. You guys see, the opponents, the moment they see that more than two people or two people are committing for the uh, sideline split pusher, they immediately go for the cross objective. So that's what you want to do as a team when you have a Jax, for example. 
um, where you just always go for the other objective the moment multiple people are trying to collapse on the jacks. So that's what you want to do. And I really don't like the fact that the thing is it's the it's the right play to do, but it's also an in play. Like going for four four versus three, uh, Baron flip was really not good. Like if Seraphine and Sire just stall and poke them down, it's not a good idea. Trying to poke here. Dude, do you know what fucked me here? I could have used Dasses first of all, but it was the Aurelion stun. Aurelion stun just screwed me. We do get the dragon. I tried to jump in on them because they were all bunched up and I did a lot of damage, but maybe I should have kept my distance a little bit longer because the fucking Aurelion stun over the wall, um, yeah, cost me the death. Uh, because of uh, steel caps. So the moment I get stunned, I'm just screwed. Um, actually, my bad there. Maybe I should have repositioned myself a little bit further away, try to poke them down longer and then jump in. Uh, very good by Seraphine to secure, uh, secure the kill with the um, Elder. But they were so juicy, I wanted to hammer on top of them doing tons of damage. But um, yeah, Aurelion just fucked me up. Aurelion fucked me up, guys. Oh, you, you guys can't tell me this game is not exciting. It's a pretty close game. Going back and forth, either way. And now we're, we're starting to get to a point, if you don't have mana immune, you're kind of falling off with the damage. Because with mana immune, your poking damage is cracked. And with this build, um, in the full late game, I would say in the mid, around mid late, it's very good. But the moment you get into full late game, that's when uh, Jace is kind of falling off. Okay, I'm just trying to pressure here. Okay, Mr. Fucking Jax is here. I'm pressuring him and now I'm trying to rotate, trying to avoid my teammates because they uh, have the advantage here. I'm trying to pressure mid at, at the same time. And now I see, okay, fuck, Rain is here. I'm doomed, and Rakan is here. I'm, I'm just baiting, guys. I'm getting caught, but I'm I'm stalling time for my teammates to get the Baron. It's okay. I'm minting here, but I'm stalling. It's a 5 pet move. I'm stalling so my teammates can get Baron, but yeah, I just got caught. Just got caught. It's fine. We get Baron. It's fine. I pressured the Jax in the top lane. Out rotated him, pressure mid lane, and then three people are collapsing on me, and my teammates are securing the free baron. It's worth. We inted, but it's worth. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I did my job here. <laughs> I did my job. I did my job. We did our job, guys, and it's a G. C worth. It's a five pet jobate. Sacrifice yourself for the greater good. I mean, yeah, we know it's an end, but uh, let's call it a sacrifice for the greater god. But yeah, that's good for the gameplay. Hope you guys enjoyed it. A very intense, close matchup. If you guys enjoyed this gameplay, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and write down below in your comments your opinion about Jace. And I see you next time. Hope you have an awesome day. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and bye-bye. Fire spreading all around my room. My world's so bright. It's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush.